All right, so this is going to be your second assignment. Um, your second assignment is going to be the last one for circular motion. Um, I feel like if we can get to rotation faster, we can review this section faster. So, because um, rotation is probably going to be the big beast in this unit, and with that, and along with adding simple harmonic motion, we need to make sure we really understand this. So, uh, there's let's see, there's five assignments for this. Um, this assignment, there's five, there's five things in this assignment, and I'm going to make this due Friday. Um, now, the, the assignments are still going to start getting closer and closer together as far as due dates, because now that you guys are getting closer to, you know, being a little bit more consistent with being able to get on the internet, and hopefully you got a Chromebook from the school, so you should be able to access this material now. So, that means the turnaround is going to be a little bit shorter. Now it's not going to be unreasonable. Now you're get, you're given four full days to do this, so this is not unreasonable. Um, but you can't. This is something you can't do at the last minute. So make sure that you're asking questions. You're trying at least one assignment per day, right? And that would get you to about Friday. Um, notice we have two workbook pages, and then we have an FRQ from 2018. We have. Uh, the progress check in AP Classroom, which we'll remember that's going to be a test grade. Like always, um, I'm only shooting for 50%, but if you score higher than 50%, you know, that's more than 100. So please uh, try your best on that. I'd rather you guys get, there are, there's 22 questions, the 50 is 11. I'd rather you all get all 22 questions correct. That, that tells me that you're, that you get this, right? And then Unit 3 also has an FRQ progress check, but I put that on a separate Google Doc because uh, it's really hard to look at. So let's go through each one of these assignments individually, and I'll make sure you understand what's going on. So the first page is our uh, AP Workbook. The first two are actually from the AP Workbook. The AP Workbook is very extensive. Uh, we've done a couple pages from it, and they're pretty difficult, right? So... Uh, I expect you guys to have questions, so I want to go through this and make sure there's uh, clarity, but there still may be questions from this. Um, now, some of you may not be able to print this off, which is I'm totally not expecting you to print this off. So you may have to do something a little bit different for the instructions. So like in part A, it says cross out the incorrect statements. Why don't we just say what's incorrect about the statements instead? Um, that way you don't have to write the whole thing and then mark it out. It just seems silly. So. Just tell me what's missing, and then Part B explain what's going on, right? So you can still do do Part B, but don't write the don't write the statement or the question or anything like that. Uh, part C, you're going to draw the free body diagrams for each one of those dots. So draw the forces on each one of those points in that circle. Um, part D, Part D is a little bit different. So I want you guys to. Um, they have a couple of these derive the expression, and I, I think it's going to be pretty good practice. We we haven't done one of these yet, though, um, and I, I honestly, I wish we would have. I feel like it would have helped you guys rearrange some of these equations a little bit better. So it says derive an expression for minimum speed of the ball can have at point Z without leaving the circular path. For each of the line and the derivation, explain what was done mathematically. The first line is completed for you as an example. So... The sum of the forces equal to m times a, and since the ball uh, is in circular motion, a is the centripetal acceleration. So what you have to do, you have to give me the next step in the derivation and then explain what you did. So to start you guys off, the next step, of course, if we're trying to get to, um, if we're trying to get to speed, right, and we know that's ac, that means that the next step would be, so our equation would be, oh, Dang it. Okay. The sum of our forces, right, will be equal to, and this is at point Z. So if you look back up at point Z, point Z is at the top of your circle, right? And that's going to be equal to m v squared over r, right? Because we know that AC is equal to this, and we know that. Um, if we're talking about speed, we got to have velocity going on there. So that would be the next step here. Okay. Um, now we can actually sum up our forces, right? So in that part, in part Z, so this is your second one. Your third one would be, 
we know we have tension, which is where our centripetal force is coming from, and then we also have the force of gravity, right? And that's going to be equal to m v squared over r. Okay. Now, those are our two derivations. I want you to be able to fill in the blanks along with just writing these down. Um, it's our first one doing this, doing it this way. So I feel like it's helpful for me to go through it with you. Um, and then the second to last, I'll let you guys do the last one. The second to last one is a little bit difficult, right? So it says minimum speed. So this last one right here. So minimum speed means that our tension in the rope would go to zero, okay? So that means FT would be zero, which means your FG would be equal to MV squared over R, right? So at minimum speed, right, so think about swinging the bucket. So if you're swinging the bucket in a circle like that, if you barely make it over, right, you're not applying a lot of tension force to that, but it has just enough inertia to continue in that circle, all right? So at this point, your derivation would be mg equals to mv squared over r. Can't really see the r, but the r is down there at the bottom. So... And for some reason, I can't write on this other tab. It's something about the fact it's a PDF. Um, so for your final ones, this would be going in the second blank. This would go in your third blank. And then this bottom one would go in your fourth blank. And then your last step, you would have to just solve for your velocity. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, again, I do expect questions about this, okay? All right, and then just finish part E. Let's see, you're describing the motion of the ball after the spring breaks. The spring breaks, excuse me. Uh, describe the motion. So tell the story of the motion of the ball from, from the time the string breaks until the ball reaches the ground. So if it leaves at point P, right? So it's swinging around, it leaves at point P. At point P, where, how would it go? How would the, what would happen to the position? What would happen to the velocity? What would happen to the acceleration? Okay. Now again, write this on your own paper. Do not try to copy all this down. Don't make this table. Okay. Just write it down. You can write derivation, ex explanation, derivation, explanation. All right. There's a second one we want to do. So since we've already done an example like this, this one actually gives you the equation. So notice that, um, see part A, you're going to draw the free body diagram for this object on this rotating disc. For part B, you're going to work through the derivation. So you're going to annotate, right, what's been done, right? So remember, um, you will you will notice that they use the inequality for friction. Now, the reason we don't do that, and it's not that it's not that theirs is incorrect. Theirs is very correct. Um, just remember that friction will always be less than or equal to, right, the coefficient times the normal force, because it has to, uh, it, it will change based on how much force is applied when you're initially starting. So with static friction, right, your frictional force can vary depending on how much force is applied to it, right? So think back to your our example with uh, the car that uh, ran out of gas. So you're trying to push the car. It's really hard to get the car moving. So if you're apply, applying a little bit of force, right, your static frictional force is going to match that. But until you overcome that force, right, and as you're overcoming that force, your friction is increasing to the point which you overcome it, then it changes back to kinetic friction. So the frictional force can vary depending on how much force is being applied to the object. And that's why it's an inequality. So don't let that freak you out. All right. Because we can just say at any point in time, if we know the definite answers, right, it'll be equal to this, but up until up until we actually get some numbers, it's an inequality, okay? So go through, explain step-by-step step what they did to solve for your coefficient, all right? Part C, go through these two boys' arguments and uh, figure out who is correct, right? And explain why their arguments are correct, all right? And then you can just finish part D and E, all right? All right, so here's our first FRQ. So this is from the 2018 uh, AP exam. It should just be your first question on here. Right? So notice there's only one question. 
All right, and this was question one on the exam from 2018. So it deals with centripetal uh, gra ugh, universal gravitation and centripetal force. All right. So you should be able to go through this and try your best in solving this. Okay. All right. So remember, you want to get partial credit. So you're trying to hit as many partial points on this as possible. I'll post a key and an explanation video going through all of these, the FRQ for this, the progress check FRQ, all right? But I want you guys to try some of this stuff first. So like I did with the homework, the practice problems of the book and the flying pig lab, I will post a video um, on Friday before, at least by Friday, before it's due. That way you can fix it if you need to. But I'd like to see your work before the video and then after the video to see how much you did, okay? I want to see I want to see growth, but I also want to see if there's anything left over as far as misconceptions. All right. Uh, the next thing you would do, and of course, it uh, AP Classroom kind of messed me up here, but you want to do your unit three. It's unit three in here. Remember, we had to skip unit three initially. Um, you're going to do progress check A. Okay, multiple choice progress check A. There's 22 questions. Um, again, I'm, you're shooting for a 50, but I'd like you guys to get 100. I will grade it out of 50. So if you get anything higher than 11, you, you're going to get bonus points. Some of you guys really need some bonus points. So let's try to get that. Okay, this one, this assignment will be separate from the other assignments. I'll make the other assignments a daily grade, but this is going to be a test grade based on your score. It's easy for me to score, and if you do well on it, it will help your grade. Okay, again, you're shooting for a 50. That's 11 points correct. All right, and your last one is your FRQ progress check. Now, this first one is uh, kind of difficult, all right, but look what it looks like. It should look like a pig lab. So you've done this before. However, however, this is, right, this is a little bit different because there's no numbers involved, okay? There's no numbers involved. So that means that you need to go through and derive the expression. All right. Now, I went through it beforehand just to make sure that uh, you guys were following the right direction. So in the derive the expression part, so part A, part A, I, you're drawing the, the free body diagram. Hopefully we should know what that is by now. Um, and part B, you want to get the terms of itself, it's centripetal acceleration in terms of M, theta, and the physical constants as appropriate. So in this step, you want to go through like we did the pick lab. Don't start off with FC equals to MV squared over R. We don't know any of those quantities and we're looking for AC. So start off with your net forces. So I'm gonna give you guys some hints because this, this one is kind of difficult. Determine the net force equations for the X direction and the y direction okay do that and then hopefully you can use those two to determine the centripetal acceleration so once you've got those two net force equations um, set up remember the ac should be in the x direction so that should help you right and if you need to look back at your pig uh, pig lab. Um, it's going to have numbers in it, but if you take out the numbers, that's going to be your answer for this lab. So if you want to work through that lab first and then come back to this one, I, I totally get it because you've already done it with numbers. Just do it without numbers. All right. Um, so in part B, you're going to be explaining a, an experiment right, to determine the acceleration of, of gravity at the surface of the earth based on this. So once you've derived the expression in part A, you'll notice that the centripetal acceleration has to do with G. So G is in your answer. So knowing that, you need to be able to figure out which quantities you need to measure. And this will be so much more beneficial if we had done this in class. But um, again, you've done the pick lab, so you knew what you had to get, right? And there's something you can get in this, so you also can get time too, okay? so. You can get time, right? In the pick lab, I made it where you couldn't get time, but in this lab, you can, in fact, time it if you want to.
Okay, and then describe the experimental procedure. So it's just an experiment write up, and that's the end of this one. The hardest one will probably be a dot a i i, right? But I think you guys know enough about it at this point to get it. Um, the FRQ two is is pretty short, um, and it's kind of similar. It's, it's kind of similar to the other FRQ, the 2018 one you did, but it's actually a little bit easier. So you're just going to here I can I can. I don't need that page anymore. You're just going to uh, determine the magnitude of gravitational force exerted by on B by star B. So it gives you the value for system of A. So you want to get it in terms of how is B B's force different than A's force. So notice in A, both the M's are just M's and the radius is R. In system B, planet B has four times the mass, right? and the radius and mass of the star are the same. So what happens when you increase the mass of the planet by four? In a system C, what happens when you increase the mass of the star by four? Okay, how does that change the gravitational force? So if there, there's no change, the magnitude is F naught. So how, how much, what would be the difference in that force if you change the planet by four in this one and the star by four in this one? Um, try to de derive it as best as possible. Um, if, you, if you're following what I was just saying, it should be uh, pretty self-explanatory when you look at the equation, what happens to your force, but try to derive it and go through the steps too, okay? Um, and then for this one, how would the tangential speeds of B and C compare to planet A? So that question is pretty leading about what you should get as an answer for A, okay? Um, so you can, in this part B, uh, create a paragraph link response that may, uh, I would probably put an equation in there or draw, add a drawing uh, that, that provides claims about uh, whether the speed of A, or excuse me, of B is greater than, less than, or the same of A, and why tangent speed of C is greater than, less than, or equal to A. All right, so you're comparing the, the speed of the planet B and C. So that's the, uh, that's the tangential velocity, right? which has to do with the centripetal acceleration. So you probably want to look at, once you have the gravitational force, right, you should be able to figure out the centripetal force. Because remember, in, if you're in circular motion, it doesn't matter what force is causing that circular motion, you're, you're, you have centripetal acceleration now, right? So since you have, since you have a force going to the center, so in this case, you're rotating around don't know what's going on here. So in this case, you're rotating around, in system A, you're rotating around this circle, but you're also, right, your gravitational force is pointing towards the center, which means you have AC, right? You have centripetal acceleration. So you could just set up the gravitational force equals to your FC, right? And remember, FC is mv squared over r. So if your gravitational force goes up, your centripetal force goes up, if your centripetal force goes up, how does that change your velocity if your mass and your radius stay the same? Okay. Now remember there is a v squared, so make sure that you factor that in. Okay, that's the only hint I can give you about that. Okay. Now hopefully that answered everyone's questions. Um, but again, we'll have a Zoom meeting today. Um, and Thursday, so hopefully you can get that all your questions answered. But remember, this is due Friday, and we're going to be moving on to torque to, uh, Thursday, and then we'll do rotational motion next Tuesday. Okay, we're looking like we're getting we're getting pretty close, right? We've got another week, and then we're on spring break. This is technically this week right here. Um, so the 26th we'll do torque, the 31st we'll do rotational, and then hopefully the second we can cover some simple harmonic motion and that'll allow us to test over this break okay i've only got two no responses which means i'm thinking we're going to go ahead and just take that test if you have something planned like a vacation i would recommend you not going right now as as everything's going on right now i'd recommend you not going on vacation but um if you your, your people your your family are going places or you have plans that week there's got to be some time where you have enough you you've got 30 minutes to two hours to take a test. Okay, it's not going to be something where there's 100 questions. It'll be the same length test, 
Um, I'll just expect you to do it at home. Okay. Uh, I haven't worked out the details yet of whether we I can I want to use the AP Classroom or do something different. Um, but either way, I will let you know then. All right. So until then, uh, let me know if you have any questions in the Hangout or on this assignment post.